Hello and welcome to StarCast from Planet Waves for the 18th of August, 2021. Welcome from the far-flung corners of the internet or right from our little town. It is good to be with you. So we are now heading into a very unusual full moon in the sign Aquarius which is, of course, opposite the sun in the sign Leo. So the full moon is always the, the moon opposing the sun, and, and they have to be in opposite signs. That's the full moon by definition. Now, there's a few things that make this full moon unusual, one of which is that it is the second consecutive Aquarius full moon. There was an Aquarius full moon, I think, on the 23rd of, of July, very early in the sign Aquarius, and since the lunar cycle is shorter than it takes the sun to go through a sign. If you've got a full moon or new moon very early in the sign, you will have another full moon or new moon very late in the sign in, in a, kind of in the same billing period. So um, this is an emphasis on, on the Aquarius moon. A lot of interesting people are born with the moon in Aquarius, and it's, uh, it's one of the better moons because it, it allows a bit of detachment from the emotional drama that uh, that tends to dominate most people's lives and that uh, that ability to detach emotionally can be called a flaw you know it depends on other factors in the chart and whether th there is some uh, you know water or earth grounding in the chart but certainly it makes for interesting people and interesting circumstances and uh, the full moon is taking place in the very last degrees of Leo and Aquarius. So 30 degrees Aquarius is the full moon. 30 degrees Leo is the um, is the uh, sun. And the whole thing is square, a very unusual outer planet called Sedna. So Sedna was discovered around 2004 or so, and it has an 11,000 400-year orbit. So the last time Sedna was back in, uh, was in the position that it's in now was at the end of the previous ice age. And so this is long before any recorded history. God only knows what happened on the planet uh, during this like really, really long ice age that took went on for millions of years. Anything could have happened before that. Uh, we don't know. The, the ice is likely to have uh, wiped it out or just the, uh, the, the tides of time not that much less on the planet. I mean, we you know we think one of the oldest objects is the Great Sphinx, uh, and they you know they're way off about how old that thing is. Anyway, we're talking about in range of that long, way way older than ancient Egypt, right? That's the cycle. And what is interesting about Sedna is that one of the things that astrologers have begun to connect it with is with climate change. And the reason for this is because it was named by its discoverers, who include Mike Brown, uh, for the Inuit, meaning Eskimo, uh, goddess of creation named Sedna. And the story is a uh, r rather long and drawn out tale, which I once saw <laughs> dramatized at an astrology conference. And the, the drama went on for about three hours. It was one of these kind of avant-garde presentations that I'm, I'm amazed that, you know, that it was even allowed to happen and that many people sat through it. I think finally I was like, okay, I get the, I get the point. But the, the story of Sedna is worth mentioning. And I've just learned this because, you know, people resonate with these, uh, with the, with these mythologies. Uh, so Sedna is a young Inuit girl and um, very, very beautiful, long, uh, long, long black hair, and she likes to spend her time looking in the mirror, brushing her hair. And all kinds of men come along as suitors, and she's not interested. And in Inuit culture, you finally can't hang around the house. You, you know, you're supposed to marry off. And so her father arranges marriage and ma marries her off, and uh, she's taken off in a boat, um, <laughs> you know, somewhere, and turns out that the that the husband is a, a demon, and she uh, starts to howl, 
to you know to to get her father's attention and the howling becomes the wind right this is uh, the beauty of myths it's a very dream like and so she she's like howling in um you know terror because she's suddenly um, been you know essentially kidnapped with her, the help of her father buried off by a demon to a demon and um i guess she jumps out of the boat and the water is very cold and she starts to freeze and um, her her fingers and toes fall off and, and become various different sea creatures like dolphins and porpoises and so forth. And, uh, and uh, her arms and legs fall off and become um, whales and so forth. And uh, then she settles down at the bottom, essentially looking like a weevil. Weevil? Weevil. Weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. Uh, a weevil at the bottom of, um, of, of the ocean... Uh, with uh, with uh, all natty natty tangled hair, because she can't brush it, because she no longer has any uh, hands to brush her hair with. Plus, she's at the bottom of the ocean. So, um, this is a very strange myth, and it is considered a happy myth because it's the story of how all the food came into being, right? Because the Inuits live on on these uh, sea creatures, and so she feeds everyone. That's one thing about her and some involvement in you know in, in the storms and the tides the howling of the wind and all all of this stuff so anyway you know a long time goes by nobody in the western world has a clue who um, Sedna is and one of the things that Mike Brown the lead discoverer likes to do is uh, you know dust off uh, interesting old mythological names and name uh, points that he discovers and there's been a lot after after these interesting new things. He got in some trouble for Sedna because he gave it its name before it was properly certified as a discovery by the International Astronomical Union. It was a big kerfuffle at the time, but the, the name has stuck, and, and that's, uh, that's officially what it's called. Now, the, the, so it's hard to imagine a planet with, um, with, with an 11,500-year orbit, right? I mean, it's like, uh, that's like half of... The procession of the equinoxes only goes on for twenty six thousand years, so it's like almost half of the procession of the equinoxes, more than a, well over a third, and again, like the end of the last ice age, and so it's 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 on a time period that is uh, just incomprehensible. By the way, it's technically a scattered disk object, hanging out in the very last degree of Taurus. It's been in Taurus since nineteen sixty five. Uh, that's a long time for a planet to be in a sign. So it's been in, in Taurus for 56 years, uh, and it, it enters Gemini next year. So it's in the very end of its run through Gemini. And then what happens on Sunday is that the sun and the moon line up and make a full moon at exactly 90 degrees to this thing. And what you get when you take the inner planets, which include the sun and the moon, they're not really planets, but let's call them that, personal points or inner planets, uh, that, that are m more of the normal, ordinary things that we feel and think and do, right? That's what Venus, Mars, Mercury, Sun, and Moon represent and, and the rising sign. They're very practical. They're, they're things that we recognize. They're not abstractions like the beginning of the age of industrial science, which is Uranus, or the beginning of the age of um, spirit spirituality and mysticism and the telegraph and the civil war that's neptune the beginning of the age of global fascism that was pluto discovered in 1930 just as the whole fascist situation in europe was uh, was getting cooking uh, the inner planets are about our personal experiences our feelings our needs and our desires and the things we recognize can feel with our senses and um what you get when you bring the inner planets into contact with the outer planets is that it's like bringing the outer planets in closer so you can feel what they are about. And this whole thing is taking place in uh, in the last degrees of, of Leo and Aquarius, which then are m making an aspect to, to Sedna in the last degree of Taurus. So it's edgy to begin with, and Sedna is edgy, and the sun and the moon are at way, way out at the end. Now, the... Sun and the moon themselves are making an interesting pair, uh, an interesting pairing of Sabian symbols. Those are the degree symbols. 
And I've got an article about this, uh, at least today on Wednesday. I'll leave it up a couple of days. Uh, and, and it'll be still be on the front page um, about the full moon. Let me just see if I've got the, the, the title right. Um, it used to be that I could quickly recall the titles of my articles. But it's called Aquarius Moon, Leo Sun, Face to Face, The Mystical and the Mundane. A new essay by me. And this is right on the front of planetwaves.net. And if I move it down one story, it'll be the second or third piece down. Also a very cool piece about the Woodstock Festival. Today's the anniversary, the 18th, the anniversary of the festival ending. So um, these uh, Sabian symbols are... um, Two of my favorites. One, the end, the end of Leo, the last degree, is an unsealed letter. And this is about how everything that we think is private or concealed ultimately is revealed and is found out. Imagine finding an unsealed letter like in an antique, uh, you know, in an antique desk. You wouldn't think of anything of uh, opening it up and reading it. Then at the end of Aquarius, there is a Sabian symbol, which is the namesake, it's the kind of symbol that is the Sabian part of the Sabian symbols. And the, the let me see if I can uh, find the book here. Sabian symbols, <clears throat> channeled originally by Elsie Wheeler and the Reverend Dr. Mark Edmund Jones, an astrologer. They did this in 1925. There should be a big uh, centennial celebration of this thing. Um, and uh, my favorite uh, version of it is a lot of people's favorite, which is the, Mar- uh, the, the Dane Rudyard version called an astrological mandala. And so the last degree of Aquarius is, get ready, deeply rooted in the past of a very ancient culture, a spiritual brotherhood in which many individual minds are merged into the glowing light of a unanimous consciousness is revealed to one who has emerged successfully from his metamorphosis deeply rooted in the past of a very ancient culture. A spiritual brotherhood, parentheses, in which many minds, individual minds are joined into the glowing light of a unanimous consciousness, on parentheses, close parentheses, is revealed to one who has emerged successfully from his metamorphosis. So it's the it's about the revelation of the of of the kind of unified nature of, of consciousness but in in the symbol is it's not you know okay now you're like everyone else or now we're all going to be together or now we're going to have communism or now we're which people are dreaming when they say that now we're going to um, all be for the community and against individuality well what this Sabian symbol is saying is that actually what happens is that the the the, the the group mind is a group of individuated individuals who cannot be part of that group mind unless they've gone through their individual metamorphosis, individual metamorphosis. So to, to, to be prepared for the group life, you must go through your transformation process. This is exactly opposite the unsealed letter. And to my thinking, this emphasizes the necessity for total transparency is part of the spiritual growth process. There can be nothing that is left hidden. There is nothing that is left secret, concealed, uh, or unknown. The, the, the spiritual initiator aspirant must fully reveal their reality and be, be in denial in no part of their lives. This, of course, is profoundly challenging. People are you know, often horrified or terrified at the notion that that someone is going to know their their deepest uh, their deepest secrets, and yet uh, they are often finally known and they are um, uh, revealed. So you you know the only thing that this could possibly irk is this uh, thing called the ego, which is this guilt and fear complex that we call. And identity, and the only thing between, um, between let's say a self-realized person and not is this kind of obstacle in consciousness called the ego, right? And so that the unsealed letter is saying, open that up and allow out whatever may be previously concealed and 
you know, in an odd way, the mirror of that is the is self realization, and and then having a much wider, broader, deeper uh, reality revealed to you, to to the aspirant, to the person who's on the spiritual journey. That, by the way, is really the only answer to the world crisis right now. Uh, as Sting said, there's no political solution to a troubled evolution. There's not going to be a medical solution to a troubled evolution. There's only going to be an evolutionary and spiritual solution. And that is going to mean making sure that we recognize the true source of power uh, and, um, and, and not put our faith in magic and in in people and in, in governments and uh if you if you're going to render unto caesar that which is caesar's as as the teacher said um make sure that what you're rendering actually is caesar's and not yours or not something much greater okay uh that's what I got for you. I have just finished the Leo Astrology Studio reading. Um, it is a thing of beauty. I will put a link to it uh, on the StarCast page, planetwaves.net. So if you're listening to this from the remote, far-flung corner of the internet somewhere over in podcast land, Podbean, Apple, Apple Music or something, we're, getting, we're pushing this out into all kinds of new wild places to meet and all kinds of new wild people. Come to planetwaves.net, click on StarCast right at the top, and uh, you will um, see a link that says Leo Studio, Leo Astrology Studio, and you'll um, be able to, uh, to, to purchase this reading for $33, 75 minutes. You will not be disappointed, I personally guarantee it. Uh, personal consulting with me starts at $5.55 an hour, so for $33, it's a... Uh, a small risk, and uh, some people do come in for full readings. But I, I think I get you at least halfway there in these um, astrology studio readings. So please, uh, please do check it out. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your business, and most of all, your trust and the precious investment of your time. And I'll catch you with a new edition and a new Planet Waves FM on Friday. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.